Take a look at this fun little card that I've got inside here. Uh, the theme is a candy shop or sweet store. It's got its own designer envelope, part of the kit. And when the recipient pulls the card out and lets it go, it pops up as a little 3D sweet shop. Isn't that fantastic? Uh, on the front, you can see it's got the little jars of uh, way outs as we all remember from our childhood, I'm sure, jelly beans and all the favourites. Um, around the side, it's got window boxes uh, with decoupage to make them three-dimensional. And on the back, there's some space for writing, decorating, uh, some more trim, whatever you need. There's lots in this kit. It's really fun to make. And I'm sure that anybody who got one of these and it popped out of the envelope would start their birthday or their special day <laughs> with a bit of a laugh. So this design is by Carol Clark. It's from Crafty Print again, and it's cost £2.40. So I've put the link below if you want to go ahead and purchase it. You can then download it onto your computer and save it, because that way you can make as many of these cards as you wish. They're great for family, they're lovely for children, and you'll probably sell quite a few at a craft fair as well, because they really stand out being three-dimensional. So when you've downloaded your kit, I'll show you what you get. So sheet one here shows the front of the card and the door and also the side and you'll see there's two little bits here that have slits and holes and these are to hold this string, uh, this loop of elastic that's actually the secret to why it pops up. See when you stretch it over to the right the elastic stretches, it goes into the envelope flat but when it comes out the elastic makes it pop back up. So that's what those bits are for. So that's sheet one, happy birthday, way scales, little extra jars to add on with some 3D foam, lollipops, all sorts of things there. Sheet two is the back of the shop. Here is the writing space, the other side that's uh, there. There's a blank here, which I find very useful because you can put a child's name on that and they can have their own sweet shop. Uh, there's a Mother's Day um, label as well, if you wish. More window boxes and flowers. The third sheet is the roof. There's a roof support here and then the sort of awning that goes V-shaped over uh, what you've constructed, your little shop. There's two sheets in here of coordinating paper. And the idea with these is that if you want to have um, a colour inside your shop, then when you've printed out the front and back sheets, you print these patterns on the back. And then if somebody looks inside the shop, they've got a pattern. I haven't worried about that, but I did print the paper out because it's a really lovely design. And I'm going to show you an alternative card at the end, not just a pop-up, but a quick and easy card using these papers. Uh, and the last two are the envelope that we've already seen. I printed these out uh, on printer paper. The, the rest of it I printed out on heavyweight card, which is about 220 GSM or £100 if you're in the US. Uh, but this is fine on printer paper, the front of the envelope and the back of the envelope. And I'll show you how all that goes together in just a minute. So as I say, once you've purchased it and downloaded it, print it out um, on decent card. And then the first thing you need to do is make the score lines. Do these. Uh, before you cut them out. I'll show you why. See on the card front here? The school lines are marked here and here. And if you've already cut this out, you can't actually see where to put your school line. So I'm going to score these ready by lining up my ruler with those black lines. And you just need um, a blunt edge, uh, a blunt knife, a uh, butter knife. Um, you might have a proper scoring tool, but I'm just going to use the back of my scissors and run down there. It divides the front of the card from that tab. There's more marks here. So rule on again and score down the corner of the shop and a third line here. And this just separates off that tab that's going to hold the elastic. Okay. On the second sheet, there's three more to score. The same thing again. You're separating off the tab with a score line here. You're going to the end of the back of the shop and put in a score line there. And again, marking off the end tab that will fold inside like that. I'm going to leave the roof for now. I'll show you the score lines to that when we get to them. So when you've cut 
cut them out you'll have a piece something like that for the front now i haven't quite finished cutting these out let me move those out of the way i haven't quite finished cutting these out you'll see i've left some white bits here and these round circles because i wanted to show you this bit you need to stab that hole with the sharp pair of scissors or an, a craft knife or if you've got a hole punch that would do the job nicely as well uh, so i'm just going to pop the circles out there and there and then I'm using my scissors to finish cutting up to that circle and this makes it easy to just slide the piece of elastic in once it's inside same with this side we've got a, a line to cut up to that circle and a slot to get the elastic in so once you've done that you can turn it over and start to fold along the score lines uh, and use um, a bone folder or a credit card something like that to just go along the the folds and make a nice sharp crease so we've got three one two three and while we're still working on the front we need some double sided tape to hold it together not very much as it turns out I'm going to put some down can you see the the fold is there I'm going to push it on the tab side of the fold there just running it up like that and then I'm going to put in a diagonal piece here that holds it together. You can use wet glue if you like, but the important thing is that however you stick this tab, you want the adhesive to be here and here, but nothing at the bottom. This needs to be free so that you can slip the elastic in. So I'll do the same on this side. There's the folds, so this is going to go like that. And another bit diagonally to support it there. And that's actually all that holds the shop together rather cleverly. So the front's done. Moving on to the back, we need to um, fold this one as well. I've already popped the holes here and cut them. So I'm just going to finish off by finding those score lines and folding along. Three of these. And again, burnish it with something to make it really crisp. So we've done the front, we've done the back. No, there's no adhesive on here. It's all going to go together from the first piece. So we can go ahead and join them together. So I'm just going to take the covering paper off that tape on the tap. And I'm going to bring the sides together, matching them top and bottom. And then I'm pressing the tabs together like that. So they'll be on the inside, nice and easy. And the same for this one. I'm going to remove the protective paper off that tab. Match up the edges. It's a little bit more difficult because you're completing the, the box. But we can do it. And once it's in line, press it together. And as you can see, you've now got a full uh, three-dimensional shop and those tabs are inside ready for the elastic at the end. So moving on to the roof. The roof also needs to be um, scored while you've still got it on the big sheet. So I'm um, taking my ruler, I scored it here. There are some blue lines there to line up. Like that. And this is the roof support and this has got three score lines, little red lines. So we're going to go across the top, where it's marked there, and two going this way. You can just see the red lines there and there, the scoring, and again here. And you can go ahead and cut those out, which I've done here. And you've got the apex of the roof here, and you've got the roof support. 
So starting with the roof support, you can see that there's a mark there and it actually indicates halfway across the roof and you'll use that for lining things up later. I'm going to use some double sided tape across there. Ready. But before we do that, I need to get this inside the card. So fold the tab over towards the back and these two side scores that we do, the left hand one goes towards the back like that and the right one comes forward like that. So you've made sort of an, uh, an S or a Z really. This one, the left hand one goes towards the back, this one goes towards the front and the overall flap at the top again goes towards the back. So to put it into the shop now, I'm going to glue, as you can see, on the outside surfaces. So I'm going to put wet glue on this side, the blue side, and wet glue on the white side here, because those are the bits that are going to stick to the um, inside of the box. So I'm gluing them both at once because I can get to it a bit easier. And I'm using wet glue because wet glue allows me to slide and adjust, which is necessary for this. So putting it in right at the peak there and lining up the side, I can slide it until it's exactly in place and then this is going to take about 20 seconds to set this uh, glue. I'm using PVA glue, um, this one, tacky glue. Uh, it's a nice thick one, it doesn't soak your card and get it all wet and it dries clear so if you do happen to go over the edges anywhere you don't need to worry about it. So coming round to the other side, again match up the point, come down the sides slide it with using the wet glue. You see if you put tape on you've got no chance it, it sticks where it sticks and that's it. And I'll just leave that drying for a moment while we deal with the apex of the roof. So we scored across the middle and fold it over and burnish it and then we need to mark the halfway point on the back of this roof. So it actually measures 14.4 so I'm going to mark it at 7.2 there. Just make a little line that goes either side of the fold. And that's just to help me to line it up. So going back to our, our shop, hopefully it's now drying. I'm going to take the backing off that double-sided tape. And get it. Turning this roof inside out, I can match the lines up. Can you see? The centre line with the centre line and then just fold this piece with the sticky tape over onto the roof. And I know that that's going to be centred. Right, get rid of these clips now. Should be dry and fold the roof down. Isn't that cute? It's giving you a nice little sort of awning finish there. Lovely, looking good. So you can fold it down flat, always squish it towards the right because that's the way it's going to go when it gets the elastic in. Uh, and if it's got a bit of resistance, just press it out on all those folds, make sure it's, it's going down because this is the easiest way to decorate it. So let me see what I've got going on to, that I've cut out from all the bits. There's some sweetie jars in the kit on those um, sheets one and two. So I'm going to use these. I'm probably going to pop one on the door there because I think it should stand out and maybe another one down in front of the card. There we go. On the side pieces, actually on both sides if you look, there are little windows and you get some flowers and some window boxes to dress them up. So the, there's one set of flowers that leans to the left like that sorry, like that. And this one leans to the right. So they're just slightly different. But I decided to swap them over because you get more flowers. You can see more flowers if you layer them up and they're different. So how do you line them up? Well, I'm going to choose this one first and I want to put it about there so I can see the flowers. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue right at the bottom of the stems and then come along with the window box and press the window box in place over it. 
This isn't to put either of them in place. This is just to line the flowers up on that window box. And I can then add some um, 3D foam tape. I've got some little half ones here because the full ones were a bit big and they show. I'm going to put a couple of little bits along the bottom and square in the middle. And these just lift it up and give it some depth. Take off the backing. And when you put this into place, because we lined it up, we know that those flowers are going to be in just the right place. Cute, isn't it? So we'll do the same with the top. Uh, these I want to be maybe twisted a bit like that. A bit of glue. Position the window box cover like that and then lift it off and with a bit more foam we can reposition it back on with uh, more dimension and give it a little bit more texture and interest. I can get them off. This one's definitely wants to stay. So I'm taking off the backing paper now. And lining it up. Right, so that's that one. You can do exactly the same on the other side because there's enough pieces, but I'm going to turn around and just work on the back for a while. So I've got the same thing here. You can put more flowers on if you wish. And I've got a strip to um, add to this window box. And again, I've put half, half squares of this 3D foam tape on, or you could just use bits of corrugated card, anything that will just lift it up, a little bit of uh, craft foam if you've got it, and just use your glue to glue it on and add it there. Um, we've got some more decorations here. We've got um, the little weighing scales and a couple of lollies. So I've put foam on the back of these already. And I'm just going to put this down in the corner. I'm actually going to put it over those flowers, I think. Um, we've got some uh, greetings. Hope you have a great day. That would be nice. I'm popping this on the back. Just gluing that flat. I think we've got enough uh, 3D foam going on there. Um, there are various sentiments, as I mentioned at the beginning. There's a happy birthday. I'm actually going to put the blank on because I want to put a little girl's name on here so that she can have her very own sweet shop when she opens it. So I shall add her name later. And I've got um, to you. Let's pop it on the door. There's Mother's Day greetings, there's Happy Birthday greetings. There's quite a few options when you make this card so you can personalise it however you wish. So the card as it stands is done, but we just need to add the elastic. So I'll just get mine here. You need some round elastic or shearing elastic, whatever you call it, and you need to cut it at least 10 inches long. Okay. And then fold the two ends together and tie a knot. To secure it so really you're just making one giant elastic band but the important the important thing here is i'm not going to tighten it just yet it needs to be less than four and a half inches from the knot to the curve uh, to the loop so there's the four and a half yes i can take it a bit longer tighten it there so the knot's on four and a half and that doesn't quite come to the end that's just about right for the length that you want to put inside it so your loops are all ready to go you just thread this down, slip it into that slot that I showed you, and it goes down into the circle that we hold, that we popped. There we go. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of tension to it by twisting it a few times and then popping it down onto the other tab on the other side. So you can use your twisting just to get it to the right length. So when it stood up, the elastic actually is not doing anything. 
but when you lie it down and press it to the right to put it into the envelope this is what gives it the spring like that so that's how that works so that's the card done let's just have a look at the envelope so um, I showed you earlier there's two pieces uh, I went ahead and scored them again there were score lines here and here along the tabs and a score line here to show where you're going to fold the top over so I've scored them and I've put them out I'm just going to do the folding and the sticking up now okay. I'm going to add my tape here it is I want to be narrow tape onto these flaps You can use wet glue again when you're making the envelope but you do need to be careful not to let it flow over uh, and stick your envelope together it's uh, it's easily done so i do like tape for this or you could use um, a glue stick they're ideal because again they've got um, you can control them uh, and it doesn't flow out over the edges but it's sticky enough to hold paper remember these are just printed on printer paper so that's fine so i've got my tape in place I've got the front of the card here, so I'm going to start by putting this tab onto lining up with the front of the card. Like that. And sticking it together. If you get the bottom level, the sides fall into place quite nicely. So I'm taking off the protective paper there. Gosh, it's sticky. Laying it down like that. And the final side. And there's your really lovely envelope. Just waiting for your card to slip inside. I'm sure that will delight any little girl on her birthday. So I did promise you that I'd use some of that other paper for an alternative card. Remember I said that there were the two different uh, backing sheets that come with the card. And so I cut one of the sheets down, I cut the margins off, folded it in half and made it into a card block. And the nice thing about this is it's decorated front and back. I did initially want to use the stripy paper, but I'll show you what happens when you fold that into a card and then you put this stripy card on it. Um, <laughs> It's a bit dazzling on the eye, so I gave up with the blue paper and I went for the green spotting, which actually does look very nice. So I've cut out from sheet A, I just printed it again and cut out the shop front again. I didn't bother with the sides and I didn't bother with the tab because all I want is just um, a pretty card front for this quick and easy card. So I'm going to pop it down somewhere near the bottom there. Lovely. And then I cut a piece from the roof. Again, I printed sheet three out on card and I just trimmed five centimetres or two inches off the bottom of the roof awning. I've put double sided tape along the top there. And these are the 3D foam pads again, or just put something in that will give it some dimension. And the reason that I've got it flat at the top and foam at the bottom, as you'll see in a minute, is it gives it a nice um, lean. So this time you need to line it up yourself by eye near the top of the card press down that double-sided tape and then press on those foam pads uh, you probably can't see on the cam on the camera but this is lifted up now so it looks quite nice nice and three-dimensional i've got some more little bits that i've trimmed out ready to decorate it can't can't do without a few more sweetie jars jelly beans and fruit swirls here Um, because it's got a pattern back, I chose to put one of the little windows on the back as well. I cut these out from that sheet one. I just popped it in the middle for added interest. Looks about right. And then inside the card, I used whatever else I've got. 
which in this case was another window. This was the bigger window. Bit of PVA glue on there. You don't need a lot. Down in the corner. I've chosen to go with the happy birthday for this one. Inside it, nothing on the outside. Which looks lovely. And I've got the scales here. I think we'll have these on this side. And how about one of the lollipops tucked in behind? Here's a bit of glue. And what I did with the lollipops on all of them was I used something called glossy accents. And you just put this on. I'm not going to do it now because I want to fold the card and it takes a while to dry. But it's just clear liquid gloss. So when you add it to the lollipops, I don't know whether you can see it on here. I used it up on there. Uh, when you add it to the lollipops, it actually makes them raised and it gives them a real nice shine as if they're ready to be licked and it looks really nice. And so that's a quick and easy flat card from the same kit. And if you make up the envelope, it fits in there just nicely as well. So a quick card and a fun card, both from one kit. I do hope that you'll give it a try. And just before I go, I'll tell you that there's a few more shops that you can make in exactly the same way from the same designer, Carol Clark. And I've put the links down below the video. There's a shoe shop and I made this happy birthday mum with a load of shoes. Again, the same on the side, the uh, little window boxes and space on the back which I decorated with shoes and the have a great day. And there's a flower shop. This is gorgeous. It's particularly lovely if you wanted to get well card for somebody. How nice to send them that and make them smile. It operates in just the same way. So we've got all the flowers in the shop window, a basket of daisies, a tub of tulips, and all the sentiments to add and personalize it yourself. And there's uh, one more that I haven't got made up, and that's a wine shop. So if you want to give the men a chuckle or somebody who enjoys wine, then that's a fun card as well. So I hope you'll give these a look. Give them a try. If you've got any problems, then do just message me. I will get back to you. Thanks for watching. Bye now.